Following a 40-minute delay of their launch, the crew of Apollo 14 successfully entered into an Earth parking orbit just over 11 minutes since liftoff. Over the next two and a half hours, the crew checked the condition of their spacecraft before Capcom Gordon Fullerton gave them a go for TLI, Translunar Injection, the maneuver that would send Apollo 14 toward the moon. Very shortly, uh, Flight Director Pete Frank will pull this flight control team as to our status uh, for TLI. Apollo 14, Houston. Go ahead. Here, go for the moon, go for TLI. Right here, go for TLI. Been 30 seconds away now from time of ignition. Uh, our displays show a predicted uh, Apogee uh, resulting uh, from this burn of a uh, 250,263.7 nautical miles. We're at uh, 2 hours uh, 28 minutes now into the flight. Standing by. Ignition. Roger, ignition. Good start, steering's good. Roger, and we show good thrust on the S4B. Okay, uh, Gordon, and I might say the Earth is starting to drop away very rapidly at this point. Roger. Apollo 14 had successfully boosted itself from an Earth parking orbit to a translunar trajectory, with the crew now traveling at over 35,000 feet per second toward the moon. The next big event would be docking with the lunar module and extracting it from its adapter for the trip to the moon. Apollo 14, Houston. Go ahead, Houston, 14. Roger, you are go for transposition and docking. And uh, we're going to have a site handover from Guam to Goldstone at uh, three hours even. Over. Okay, understand. We're going to Goldstone at three, and we have a go for TNT. That's affirmative. By the time of the Apollo 14 mission, the transposition and docking maneuver had been successfully completed four times once in Earth orbit, and three times while headed to the moon. The maneuver, which had become seemingly routine, called for the crew to separate their spacecraft from the S-4B third stage of the launch vehicle. The command module pilot would then turn the spacecraft around in order to line up and dock with the lunar module, which was cocooned in a protective adapter. Just over three hours after launch, the Apollo 14 spacecraft separated from the S-4B and Rusa was soon closing in on the lunar module. Hi, Ed, this is Houston. About how far out in range are you now, would you estimate? About five feet. Roger. Ed, Houston, we're about to dock. Roger. That was Ed Mitchell uh, reporting they're getting ready to dock. Uh, we're at uh, three hours, uh, 13 minutes, and now into the flight. Ed, we docked. Roger, we can see the flight oscillation. Ed Mitchell reporting that Apollo 14 command module, uh, Kitty Hawk, uh, has docked uh, with the lunar module. Despite their report of docking, the Apollo 14 crew had in fact failed to connect with the lunar module. They suddenly found themselves moving away from their target. Rusa gently applied forward thrust, hoping to complete a hard dock on his second attempt. Okay, Houston, uh, we've hit it twice and sure looks like we're closing fast enough. I'm gonna back back out here and try it again. Roger. Rusa attempted again and again. The prospect of another mission failure following Apollo 13 was haunting some NASA managers on the ground. But aboard the spacecraft, Commander Shepard had already determined that he would successfully complete his mission no matter what it took to do so. Two hours since commencing the transposition and docking procedure, and on the sixth attempt, the crew heard the sound of 12 latches engaging around the docking collar. They had successfully docked with their lunar module. We got some Houston. I believe we got a hard dock, Houston. Roger, Al, that's great. Super job, Stu. Apollo 14 was now 24,000 miles from Earth as their unneeded S-4B slowly drifted away.